Let's continue with our discussion of the thermal simulation workflow. I want to start talking about larger projects, like along the scale of what you're designing in studio this semester. When we change from small, I started small because I think it's a simpler way of learning this workflow. Uh, when we change from small to large, we're not necessarily changing anything about the, the way we push the buttons in the, in the simulation, but what we're modeling is very different. And one way that's true is that there's a geometric difference. So if we look at this small cube, it's 10 by 10 uh, by 10, so it uh, has a volume of 1,000 units. But if we add up the surface area of all these uh, exterior surfaces, we get 500. So the, the volume to surface area ratio is 2 to 1. If we come over to this larger cube, which is 30 by 30 by 30, we have a volume of 27,000 units and a surface area of 4,500. So the volume to surface area ratio is 6 to 1. What does that mean for us? Why do we care? Well, remember we've been talking about how our thermal simulation uh, is only concerned with the exterior surface of our, of our zone because that's the surface area through which the heat is moving and the air and the water vapor, uh, but uh, specifically heat in terms of uh, energy modeling. And um, so that means that a small building, a small cube, small volume, has uh, the, the the envelope around it has more of an effect on the heat loss than uh, in a larger cube uh, because the squirt so basically we're saying we have a certain amount of floor area in here and there's going to be more surface area that heat's moving through per per square foot of course with this larger cube too we're going to get more stories more floors and so that's going to exacerbate that so uh, larger buildings just have much less the the envelope itself if we're comparing apples to apples, um, has much less of, a, of an effect on the thermal design than for a small building. And so let's test that uh, with uh, with a model, like what, that's what we've been doing, right? So this is the little cube that we've been using in the uh, that we've used on and off in the initial um, studies of the, th the thermal analysis or. Uh, thermal simulation workflow. Uh, let's run a basic uh, zone analysis on it. Um, I've already got, I'm, I'm going to delete these. One reason I'm doing this, let me just show you. So if, if I, let's, I don't even remember which one I, I ran last. If I have a set of zones and, you know, windows and everything that I've, um, and I've been analyzing that, I can change that very easily, but I have to delete it. I can, I, only, I can only have one set of zones. Whatever is in this window over here is what's in the simulation. So if I have, you know, four different buildings um, and I think I'm, and I just want to deal with one, it's, that's not the, the results I'm going to get. So just be conscious of, of that. It's, that's one thing that the, the graphics window and the, the uh, simulation window are two different things. So I'm going to delete these, delete all this stuff. And let's run a uh, simulation on this small single zone. I'm just going to check, uh, select this top template because I don't really care. I'm going to make keep them the same. That's the point here. And now I need to add my windows. I'm just going to use the default glazing. And I need to add my slab, my ground boundary. And now I'm going to run it. And so I see that this is the, the output I get. And really all I'm inter interested in right now for the comparison is just showing how much energy we're using. So the site EUI is 234 kilowatt hours per meter squared. Um, now, if I wanted to run this again for this larger building, I'd have to delete these and you know, select that zone. I've already run it, so I'm not going to do that just to save time. Um, and so the result was this when I ran. This. So the large building has an EUI of 122, the small building of... 234, uh, essentially twice as much energy uh, per square foot um, in this of, of um, usable of a you know floor area in, in this one than in this one. And let's take it a step further and see if we can analyze why that's true. So in the uh, our small building, uh, this is our energy use intensity graph. We've got a, a lot of, of uh, heat load, a lot of you know less cooling load, but still plenty of cooling load. Uh, let's look at our energy flows. We obviously remember that the 
orange is the windows. We have a, a lot of uh, heat gains in the summer and not as much in the winter. So that's you know pretty bad. That's that's exactly the opposite of what we'd like to see. Um, if I switch to my large uh, my larger building, you see that just the the effect of the windows uh, has been reduced drastically because they're the percentage of window uh, to wall. That's another thing. Window to wall ratio is that something you're going to hear. Um, while that is the same, actually, let me show you that. If I um, so uh, this surface the area is 96. Just remember that. And this surface here, the area is 200. So it's about two to one. If I come and do the same thing here, I'm at 960, and uh, oops, this one is 2,000. So exactly the same um, ratio of window to wall, um, but we just have a lot more. volume and, and square footage um, per square foot of exterior uh, wall surface uh, in this building than in this building. So that really, that just drops our, the, the effect of the windows a huge amount. Um, and so if we go to, let's just, and the effect is that that then completely took out the cooling load because of this change in energy um, of heat gains through the windows in the, the, the two different um, iterations. All right, so that's that's the basic dynamic. And, um, you know, it's uh, it's fundamental. So it, it doesn't change from a physics standpoint. There's a lot of other variables, of course, but that's just something good to know. Uh, let's investigate this a little further by looking at um, that uh, little house that we were dealing with in a different in another video. Remember that we started uh, we had this uh, sort of apartment building that we designed um, and we we just said okay we've got an apartment in the middle of this and we made the point that it doesn't have much surface area. Let me turn off my You remember that that most of the uh, surface area of the envelope was what we called adiabatic. In other words, it was touching other um, parts of the building. And so we were, since they're also conditioned space, we we can assume, uh, or we decided to assume um, that there's no heat loss through them. So we're just really dealing with these, um, you know, these exterior faces out here and these windows. Um, Okay, and so when we, I want to compare this apartment um, iteration with the single family house. So remember this is apartment is here. The difference with the single family house um, was that we now have, you know, we have a ground plane here. Um, so that's, uh, that's our boundary condition is the is the ground and we have a lot more surface area that's exposed to this to the outside air uh, let's see what effect that has and and i'll just tell you about the spoiler alert it was surprising to me so i've i've run several um iterations uh using exactly the same settings again it's just that multifamily. this is not accurate but it's a comparison um, as we're learning i say it's not accurate because you know the Mechanical system probably in a, a building that was an apartment inside of a larger building is going to be different than a single family house and et cetera. Um, but I'm talking about the physics of how this works and us learning um, how to experiment with these with this modeling workflow. Okay, so if we start with the apartment, I ran a simulation. Uh, and by the way, with the the house too, I took off. I didn't. I don't have these windows in there. Those are not part of the simulation. And I don't have the the shading that I had in place. So it's exactly the same form. Just one is sitting on the ground, and the other ha is, um, you know, surrounded by uh, the apartment. So I ran uh, the apartment first, uh, and 
let's just look at mainly at the EUI. I got the, an EUI of 200. Then I ran the house, and I would think it should be uh, a, and, you know, because we're in a, remember our climate zone is uh, New York, so we're in a, you know, we've got a pretty big heating load here. Heating load meaning we have times that we have to heat during the year. So we have a lot, a lot of the year that we're losing heat through the envelope. So I would think that a building that has a lot more exterior surface area exposed to the outside is going to have a higher uh, energy usage EUI. And so I ran it and actually had a much lower EUI. So then I just said, okay, let me just try uh, different glazing because that was uh, using the single pane glass default. And so I upped the glazing to the 90.1 standard and ran the apartment again, got up 154, so much better than our 200 um, from the original apartment, right? Um, and then I ran the house, and that also improved quite a bit. So it's uh, better than it was before. It was 144, now it's 124. And the main point is it's much better than the apartment. So what's going on? Why is my common sense not working here? Um, luckily, I can look at our results and um, surmise something. And it really, it's connected to something that we've uh, talked about before. Let's start looking at the apartment. Um, and let's focus on the green, the envelope. Uh, if I, if I go from the apartment to the house, we see that I'm actually, it, it looks a lot worse because this is, this is uh, gains. Um, I'm sorry, this is losses, and we think loss is bad um, because we're losing heat. But you remember that dynamic that if we're losing heat through the envelope through the, you know, into the ground um, in the summer, then that's a time that we want to cool. And so we're actually, that's almost like a free air conditioning. And so if and look look at this too, just to um, you see how this is where we're at. We're saying, okay, what's the total gains and losses here? Um, and so when I, I switch to having a lot more losses, it, it um, pulls the gains out. Or at least that's the way I'm interpreting this. And so if we keep going, the same thing happens. Uh, here's my apartment version. And so now I've got, uh, because I'm not touching the ground, I ha I'm, I'm uh, in the apartment version. If I just turn back on the building. You know, I, I'm not losing, I'm lo this, this, uh, if, if this apartment has its heat on, I'm gaining heat from them uh, through the floor. Um, but it's not, uh, in the summer then, when they're cooling, I'm not able to dump heat into that other apartment. So um, I, in this scenario, where I, I'm, not, uh, I'm not losing to the ground, and so then this, the gray here, means I'm having to cool. And then if I go to the house scenario, where I'm, I am touching the ground, then I've got, um, I am able to lose heat to the ground and therefore um, have a much better performance. Now, that's not the way I was taught. And I mean, there, there's always a debate as to whether, in housing especially, of whether or not you're supposed to insulate under the slab if you have a slab on grade. And there's, um, uh, you know, and it, there's been a long history of discussion about this and, and modeling. And but the the highest standard buildings, like passive house level buildings, you typically uh, in our climate would have insulation under the slab. So I'm not saying I completely believe this, um, but it's wonderful about these kind of models is that I can now I'm going to spend more time on, on trying to understand this dynamic and seeing if I'm you know I need to change the way I think about this, um, which is. Not only are we modeling to, uh, you know, do things professionally and, and make a better building for our client, or in this case for your studio, but we're also learning about the physics of buildings, which is going to make us better designers. So always think of your model first as something you're learning from.